Hi, my name is JD and I am a scientist. A scientist that studies biology, which is the study of living things. And today we are talking about the most important molecule in living things, DNA. DNA is inside every cell, the smallest unit that makes up living things. And DNA tells those cells what to do. It tells your skin cells to be skin, the cells around a tree to make its bark, and it tells banana cells to be yellow and tasty. Here is a model of a cell. It's a bit like a water balloon. It has an outside layer, which we call the cell membrane. The membrane acts like a bag to keep all the components in the cell, as well as being a barrier, so it controls what goes in and what goes out of the cell. DNA is stored in the nucleus, which is this part here in the center. It is made up of a second membrane, like the cell membrane, and stores the cell's DNA. Most of the time, DNA is packed up in the nucleus really tight like a ball of string. And if we could zoom into it and unravel it, we would see that DNA has a double helix structure. It is shaped like a spiral staircase constantly turning around and around. Scientists study DNA to better understand living things. To do this, they need to extract it out of the cells. And today, you are going to be a scientist too. And together, we're going to extract the DNA from this banana. So first, let's get together all the things we need to do this experiment, many of which you use every day. Table salt, some liquid soap, a pint glass filled to about a quarter with tap water, a plastic sandwich bag, some coffee filter paper, a bottle of chilled metalated spirits, some toothpicks or wooden stirrers, a pair of household rubber gloves, a peeled banana, and a plastic cup. If you can't find any of these items near you, find the link I have provided below this video with alternatives to each item. The first step, we need to make the extraction solution, which is going to help release the DNA from the banana cell. This solution will help by breaking open the cell membrane and nucleus, and by clumping the banana DNA together, making it easier for us to see later. To do this, we'll need to get the pint glass of water and add a teaspoon of salt to clump the DNA together. Mix for around 30 seconds to make sure the salt fully dissolves. Next up, we're going to have to add one teaspoon of liquid soap. This breaks open the membrane surrounding the cell, the nucleus, and mix again for 30 seconds. The nucleus and the cell membrane are made up of fat, so like using washing up soap on a greasy saucepan, this step breaks the fatty membranes up. Be careful not to make too many bubbles, but we're going to need this for the next step. Get half the banana and put it into a clear plastic sandwich bag. Close it and mash it up with your hands. Mashing up the banana makes sure the cells are separated from each other as much as possible. When we have mashed a smooth banana smoothie, we are ready to open the bag and gently pour in the cup of extraction solution we have prepared. Get an adult or a friend to help you. This step can be tricky and you don't want to smell like a banana all day. Oh, and don't forget to close the bag. Now mix the banana with your hands in the solution for another 30 seconds. Our hands break apart the cells the liquid soap breaking down the fatty membranes, and the salt clumping the DNA together. Now that the liquid has broken down the cell membrane, the nucleus membrane, the banana's DNA is released. But the problem is, even though the DNA is extracted, it is mixed together with all other cell debris. So we need to remove the larger parts we don't need. To do this, we use this coffee filter paper. It contains loads of very small holes that allow very small things to go through while catching the larger things. DNA is extremely small, small enough to fit through these holes, so banana DNA in the extraction solution will be able to be collected in the glass below, with the coffee filter paper catching the larger parts that we don't need. Now using the same point glass we prepared the extraction solution in, place your coffee filter paper so that it is sitting in it and not touching the bottom. Being careful not to spill the contents of the plastic bag all over the table, simply open one side of the sandwich bag and pour slowly onto the filter paper. There is no need to rush this step, 
so putting in a little at a time is a great way to make sure you get as much DNA as possible. It will take a few minutes for all of your mixer to filter through. Once it is, you can place the soggy filter paper back into the plastic sandwich bag we used earlier. In this glass, we have the banana's DNA. Can you see it? Not yet, as DNA is soluble and it mixes very well with water and it is not visible, like sugar in your tea. In order to see it, we must add chilled methylated spirits. DNA is insoluble in methylated spirits, which means DNA does not mix, which allows us to see the DNA we have extracted from the banana. An adult is needed to help you and must handle the methylated spirits and make sure they wear a pair of gloves. First pour a quarter cup or 60 ml of methylated spirits into a plastic cup. Then carefully pour the cup's content down the side of the pint glass that contains your banana DNA. Closely, in between the layer formed by the methylated spirits and the banana sample, you will begin to see a white, cloudy, gooey layer that looks like tiny laces. This is the DNA becoming insoluble. We say that the DNA is precipitating. Let's go in for a closer look. You can see the banana DNA clumping together and you can help it along. Use a toothpick or a stirrer and start gathering little clumps together. Try and spool it like spaghetti. So there you have it, it's as easy as that to extract DNA from a banana and see it with your own eyes. So a quick recap on the steps it takes to extract DNA from a banana. We separated the cells with our hands. Then by adding our extraction solution, we broke down the fatty cell membrane and nucleus membrane with liquid soap and salt caused the DNA to clump together. We then filtered the unwanted parts away. And finally, using methylated spirits to precipitate the DNA, we were able to see and observe it. Congratulations, you are all now honorary cell explorers. Got a science question you want answered? Ask in the comments or on Facebook and Twitter, or just let us know how the experiment worked out for you. If you want to learn more about DNA, how it works, and how real world scientists use it to make the world better, check out the Cell Explorers page and subscribe to this channel.